him something you like your girlfriend to do to your face. I'm gonna say sit on it. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> That's the winner. Hey, Round Table Podcast. Shout Thanks, out, Steve, Steve Harvey. <laughs> what up? What up? What up? What up? I'm your boy, Corey G. Small Arms Danny at Trey Speed in the graphic Damn. gangster himself, Cole Susak. We got Zach Matheny here as a special guest. Yes, sir. Round Table Podcast. What's up, fellas? What up? Yo. What up? It's good. How good is this cigar? This shit is smooth. Why don't, this you, why don't you talk about these a little bit? This oh. is about to be my signature cigar. This is the same cigar. I smoked that epic night at Arnold Schwarzenegger's house for the first time on the back patio thinking, how the fuck did I get here? <laughs> but this cigar was so good, I tracked it down through, I went through over valleys, through rivers. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> through the mountains? Through the mountains. Have you, you know, I, I, talked to, I, talked <laughs> yeah. to a, I talked to a few monks. I went through and I found. <laughs> he's, he's describing Batman's journey yeah, right yeah, now. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> and I, I found this on the side of a hill. And I've cultivated it and brought it here to the Roundtable Podcast, and you will be able to take part in this cigar very soon. It is Dude, so fucking smooth. These what? these cigars are. This is the, the best perfect, cigar of all. This time. is the perfect yes. cigar for a victory. I I'm yes. going to call these the victory cigars. Yeah, th- we're not even going to be able to sell them in a box. You're only going to buy one at a time because this will yeah. be for you know moments. I mean, we're going to smoke them pretty often, but <laughs> this fucking <laughs> it's got a lot of moments. Yeah, 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 exactly, Zach. <laughs> there you go. See, Zach, I knew why we invited you to come today. <laughs> all right, so what's going on, Danny? How how are you doing? I, I'm I'm doing the well. last the last podcast your segment was great. By oh the yeah, way. yeah, yeah. We could bring it back maybe <laughs> yeah. later, maybe maybe the second half or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Now that we have sure. a guest cool. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of people who said, "Wow, Danny asked a question was it was very insightful. I think it was really good." So I think the people want the return of Danny asked a question. So I think it has to be an ongoing series. For and sure. And it's Flex yeah. Friday. So. Yeah, of course. Makes so sense. I think uh, Zach. You're here. You've been building a great business, personal training. There's a lot of people that listen to the show that yeah, are yeah. in that are in the business or trying to build a business. And it's like they are the main question they always ask: Where do I start? How do I start? I got this other job. I want to do fitness. Like, cause it's it's like almost like a fantasy world that you can lift weights and get paid, right? Yep, yep. You've done it. I've done it. So it's like, what's the step one? Or what did you in your mind? What was step one besides getting fired? Which I think yeah. was your step one. Yeah. But yeah. but we kind of back us track a little back track us a little bit how you kind of entered because I think that's a hard point point for a lot of for people. For sure, for sure. Well, you know, I I luckily well shouldn't say luckily, but I had this corporate job that was kind of supporting me, right? So I was operating from a point of view of that hey, you know what, I, I'm going to pick up clients just to kind of train. Originally, the, the idea wasn't to be a full-time trainer. I it just was your lo- hobby. Yeah, I fucking love training. Uh, I was making decent money at Cardinal Health with Treadway, and I was like, you know what, I'll make some extra bucks on the side just training That's clients. amazing, first off. Yeah, yeah, and Treadway lasted way longer than me, which is hilarious. But you What know, was your job at Cardinal Health? So I worked in chargebacks. So basically, wow, that I was riveting. That yeah. sounds like Dan- <laughs> hey, that sounds like Danny being an accountant. <laughs> I'm, I'm a total fucking bro, guys. I'm Zach at first, I'm in chargebacks. Yeah, Get the fuck out of here. I'm in life insurance. Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. on that same wavelength. The, yeah. the numbers thing just clicked with me. So I was real good at working these like lines. So basically, it was just like discrepancies between like hospitals we had contracts with and shit. So anytime there's all these huge governmental contracts out there for any medical product you can think of, and you know they'd buy on this contract, but they'd say, hey we actually you know we can afford it on this one so i'd work these lines so i actually lost cardinal money so i'd work each lines i'd pay back these uh hospitals basically for boring as fuck right yeah. good probably a good job for the right person and i you know i always try to have that perspective but, you know it just wasn't for me i didn't operate that way i mean that's why i got kicked out they literally packed my shit up and said you need to leave right now how long did you do that for that's fucking uh, about a year yeah a year. that was my first job out, out of college yep Damn, yeah. yeah you know i was all through that time still training here you know that was <laughs> when i was up in dublin i was driving basically this is how my day was monday through friday because this is when i was coming to old school every day monday drive down uh out to Pataskala. Then from Pataskal out to Dublin, then Dublin, I'd go back down to the short north where the gym's at. Mm. <laughs> so the, it was a lot of miles. Still, I got the same car, lucky. But basically how it started, guys, is, I, you know, I got fired. And I was at a point where, you know, I had maybe built up like four or five clients. I was probably training like 15 hours a week, maybe 20 at most. And, you know, I was like, you know what, this is my chance to make a jump. And I did. So, you know, what I would recommend to someone and, you know, for me, I, I knew I wasn't at least uh, the person to go out and try to figure out how to get these clients. So what I did is I went to this small studio space, just started learning from this guy and kind of how the, the one-on-one worked, right? You know, I, I understood programming and training all these things from Get Stack and Corey because I'd been working out here for already four or five years. So I came in from uh, uh, a position of trying to just learn 
and you know, I never felt like I train gen pop. Yeah, too, exactly. You know? Yeah, because that, you know we are just fucking freaks, and <laughs> you know, but w- but what I learned though through that is that strength training can be applied to anyone, and it has a good carryover. But for me, guys, it was just you know trying to take that jump, and I got pushed out. But for me, it was just you know accepting that hey, this is gonna be what I'm gonna try, and you know I, I just said you know if I fail, I can go back to my finance degree, and you know rest is history so for me it was just getting in front of some of those people and then from there i exploded i've been down in the short north now for almost six years and that's why my that long yeah that's why my clientele base yeah my first client down there was when i was 20 so because that was when i was still in school yeah and like the first six to 12 months what would you say was like some you know some of the challenges that you maybe didn't anticipate or something because you could be a good uh, you know, good at programming and good lifter, but you can be a shitty fucking trainer, sure, right? So, like, oh, I've seen that, fellas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the thing I had to learn quick was, you know, most people are coming to you for, you know, general pop training. Everyone's got some issue, right? So for me, it was learning, all right, you know, I knew how to get stronger and, and, and nothing really changed, but it's like, how do we help someone with, you know, low back pain or hamstrings, you know, whatever it be, right? It's figuring out that route and then getting them to go on the path of getting stronger, right? So sometimes you're having to take a step back. It's not like, all right, let's get under this bar right now. It's, all right, progressions, things like this, how to RX something. So that was the biggest struggle for me. And that's, but being here with Corey, guy I was working under, knew knew the business, right? At least knew how to train, uh, you know, in a small studio. So it was just being open to all that. But the thing that really propelled me forward is I worked every day. This dude, I started to realize this when I worked there. He, you know, had been in the business for a little bit, didn't want to work on weekends, stuff like this. So I picked up every single client Saturday and Sunday he didn't want. And then what so happened? fucking smart. So what happened is the report started to bill and they're like, oh, this, you know, 21, 22 year old is going to show up every day for me. And really, it's just building trust. So I, I just showed that I was always, I told myself, I'm never going to say no to someone in the first five years. If they want to come in on Sunday, Saturday, I still train Saturday and Sundays this week. You know, I still train. You get every- money on Sundays, oh, bro. Because yeah. everybody's available. Yeah, yeah, everyone wants to start. It's crazy, actually. I, I really believe when I was 21 and I said, hey, you know what, I'll show up. I started training a couple people on Sundays. I'll, I'll wrap eight to 10 people on Sundays sometimes now. That's wild. And, you yeah. know, make a G on you know, yeah, Sunday. Yeah, so. uh, just a G boy on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's really because a lot of people are open on the weekend and, you know, they want to be in there. And most trainers are like, oh, I want to take, you know, the weekends off, whatever. But that's that, yeah. that was the thing that separated me from the beginning. And from there, it's just showing up. That's day. a great that's point huge. because that's like showing like actual execution of how you went from it kind of being this to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? To yeah. how it bad a, you want it. It was a slow fucking build, guys. I mean, I was yeah. at that gym chiseled for year and a half, two years, building my book, went across the street. That's when I started training with Zach. I was there for two, three years, got kicked out of that place. Currently at the warehouse gym. We'll just talk about that. Training <laughs> yeah. Clients. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've learned that uh, I don't really get along with some people sometimes, but that's just because I believe in my way so much. So, yeah. And that's just, you know, being here at, since I was 18. So that's kind of the nature of the beast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've learned from this guy. Well, so. you believe in yourself to a certain point. It's like you, you're just in, you know yeah. what I mean? And I think that that's one thing I learned from dealing with Louis was – like he believed in the system so much that it was like, of course you can tweak things and do things, but if you know somebody's really off base, you're like, it's just not, it's just not and, for me. And Fuck even it. even at 21, 22, and I think it's just because I was training here already. But I, all these people I've worked under, I, you know, maybe it was an ego thing when I was younger, but I always believed I was a, a I, I worked out harder than mm-hmm. them, and I and I just cared that much more about lifting weights. Probably I mean, true. I remember the owner said to me once. He looks at me and he says, you know, Zach. If you had your dream job, what would you be doing? I said, and he looks at me and says, he'd be a fisherman. And I said, motherfucker, I'd be a trainer. That's yeah, what I'd I'm be doing, doing right now. what the fuck I'm doing right and, now. And that's when it clicked with me. And it's like, oh, some some dudes just happen to, you know, they train and this is just what they do. Just like a corporate job, you kind of fall into it. Mm-hmm. But it's like, that's, that's the difference point. between most me and most trainers that I fucking sacrifice a lot to get that's into this space. Yeah. Right? So and a lot of guy, I see a lot of guys trying to get out of the space. So I just fucking lean into it and I think the person that's I me am. too. I think I realized that young too, Zach. I was like, this is me. Like I live and breathe and fucking die this way. Yeah. And like that's not how When it I is still tell everybody. other trainers that I get up at three coming out here to train at four and then go back down to train clients so it blows their fucking mind but yeah because you're willing to do what they're not yeah and it, that's it, the fucking separated that's how we were fucking savages and we went yeah and, and it, it, they asked it. what tricks and shit i had and there's really no tricks i just literally been getting up since three Show since up. i was 18 <laughs> <laughs> i mean it just it, you might have some tricks I, I re- some I other really parts of life you can <laughs> share with yeah <laughs> well i gotta start going to bed a little earlier <laughs> <laughs> tucker, tucker max shit yeah <laughs> 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 that, I think there was like some amazing spots that you just shared with some of these young people that like how do they get into it and things they're wanting to do 
that yeah. <laughs> things that they're so loud. <laughs> things that they're they're you were willing to do that others weren't, and that was your spot to like change yeah. from dude a G on a Sunday that had to replace your income. Yep, from Real your quick. old job. Yep, in one day. Yeah, a week. I was making maybe. 13, 1400 a week at Cardinal, yeah, right? Yeah. So it, 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 that never, I never tripped on that. Like I believed, I said, all right, you know, I knew I had five, six clients. I, I believed in the, the 10 X potential, right? Like I knew I could g- keep growing it. I just had to keep believing in myself and I've been real lucky and I, I really believe in re- building rapport. And my big thing is getting clients to try. Most of my clients now have trained with me for I've, 60% of my people have been with me for four plus years. It's retention. Bro. It's retention. And you know, I, I try to always tell people, Hey, I, I want to train you so you can go on and do this eventually yourself. But most people stay because of the person I am and, and mm-hmm. that I, I just show up, man. I do Fuck all yeah. the fucking small things, right? You know, I t- yeah. I'm writing everyone's workouts down, what weights they hit. Most trainers don't even do that. You're trying shit. to over deliver, not yeah. trying. You are. I am. I mean, it's just yeah. all the little things, man. Because there's a million, there, there's a million Fuck fucking yeah. trainers in Columbus, right? Oh yeah, I, that's what I think. It shit is saturated. But how do I make myself different in appealing for business here locally first, right? Yep. That's why. Because when yep. I came here, I was like, all right, I'm trying to go to a fucking a city. I don't know anyone. No one fucking knows me. How do I become a great trainer here? Mm-hmm. Then build enough for eight or ten years, which is exactly what you're doing right now. Then how can I become a great trainer? you know, regionally or in the U.S. and then internationally. Like, it doesn't go from Corey walking in his first fucking studio at 20 years old to Corey doing shit with Arnold on fucking bodybuilding.com. Yeah, it doesn't a, work that fucking nah, way. Man. And that's the perspective. And, you know, I, I was lucky, you know, because you talk about not many people saw you those 20, tw- from 20 to 30. And that's where I am right now, 26, yep. man. And I and I keep reminding myself and I keep telling myself, hey, if I got to do It the keeps inter- getting better, too, Zach. Yeah, every, every year. year has been better. <laughs> it, my COVID year was better than my first. My 2019 was my first year on my own. Tw- it, end of 2018 going into 2019. I did better during COVID with the fucking gyms closed for four months than I did the previous year. Because once again, you were willing to do I showed shit. The fuck I, up. I was going to the so park, good. man. I was training fucking people in my 800 square foot apartment. It, so I bought crash pads so we could still deadlift and shit heavy. Nothing really changed. So man. fucking good. You and figure, pe- you figured it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Most people just were dormant and they just kind of sat there and what was me, look for a handout. Well, but, it wasn't know. even I figured it out. I had an answer for someone that next day. I remember gyms closed March 16th of 2020. I had an answer for everyone March 17th. I found it. I was calling him. I was Fuck driving yeah. around Grandview. I found parks. I had shit in my apartment. Fuck so yeah. Because that's the ultimate entrepreneurial thing is you always have to no, I'm not training. I'm an entrepreneur solution. first. Absolutely. Solutions first. Fucking good. It's wet. It is wet, Danny. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, Trayvon, what do you think? You're taking it all in over there. You know this. <laughs> He's taking that cigar. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. He's like, I'm over it's here like, in the cut. No, yeah, I'm, I'm just, just chilling. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's awesome. Well, yeah, and also, like, there's so many good spots for young entrepreneurs because a lot of the shit that you are willing to do, some of these people are bypassing because they think they're, like, above it or something. I never really got that part, but I think also me having to build my business pre-social media give me a different perspective than with you guys a little bit. You know what I mean? Because when social media came out, I was like, shit, I've been getting ready for 10 years. Fucking put me in, coach. Like, I'm ready. You know what I mean? But that wasn't like that for you guys. You grew up in it. So the comparison – thinking somebody's ahead of you this like I never really had all that yeah so sure. it's kind of different for me I, you know I, I feel like probably a lot of young trainers you know I, I get on Instagram and I see all these people with all these followers and you know who really knows what's happening behind the scenes and if they're really training people right but so or I, if they're I just, really making fucking money yeah it doesn't mean shit right but no. I, I just always hang my hat on that hey I'm getting these 50 to 60 hour in-person training sessions we, you know the way I see this is this helping me build my you know, potential online business down the road. I, I'm putting actually in these hours. Who fucking knows all these Instagram trainers if they have actually mm-hmm. trained anyone in person? And you know, I, I think you can be a good trainer and only train online. But I, I really hang my hat on like, hey, I fucking I'm in there with these people every single day, learning. I'm of course learning with them too. And so many different pops, bro. Right. I think and, that's and, a and big that's part I'm of still it. a big part of that. My business is still a lot of general population. But over the last two or three years, I'm definitely starting to get more of this crowd that's strength based, yeah. but body bodybuilding focused stuff too. So and it, it is. I mean, I had to, you know, truth, I want to be able to train more athletes, you know, power lifters, bodybuilders. I, that's definitely where my niche is at. But still, right now, probably most of my clientele mm-hmm. are the general pop. Think about this, too, Zach. That 10 years that I put in before any of you guys did one of my workouts on yeah. Twitter, yeah. I was doing in the same way. I mm-hmm. was I was refining them, trying them. Me and Dustin were trying them. We were trying them with our clients. Then I brought them out to the world. Yep. Then it had a, you know, so it's like if I don't have that – big like Tupperware full of just workouts which I would just pull out give some ridiculous name to change a couple things and put on the internet mm-hmm. and I and I had 10 years of those workouts in that fucking yep. in that box then my life's completely different if I don't spend that time 
basically honing my craft. That's what I've kept trying to drill with him is like, it's coming, it's yep. coming, it's going to yep. incrementally get better, but then the craft is going to be so deep that no one can take it from you. Yep. It's not fake. It's, it's real. fucking it's real. There it's you real, go. Man. That's big. That's big. Mm -hmm. It's the same as the hours all these guys are putting in in their own individual areas. Like, because we can fast track it because of the amount of time and the amount of production and the amount of reps that we get in a, just even with the podcast in a three year mm -hmm. period, we don't fucking miss a week. Yep. It's like, you know what I mean? So reps, 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 reps. That's how you become great or even get a chance to be great. Yep. You know what I mean? You've got to be able, willing that's to put what, that time in. Yeah, when all the gyms shut down, that's why I didn't sweat. Because I, I, like, I told myself, I said, hey, man, this is real. These relationships, I had a good year there, too. <laughs> the, our relationships with my clients are real. You know, I wasn't sweating too much. I just had to find a place to work out. It's that's the point awesome. I want to hit on is that it seems like all of your clients do have a real authentic like relationship with you. Probably because what they see is exactly yep. what they get and you're probably having a real fucking conversation with them and actually trying to help well, them. I, you know, I, most of my clients, they all follow me on Instagram, right? And they, they see me getting up. They yep. see me they lifting. It, they see me lifting with bands, which we're doing in there. And that that provides that trust level to a whole nother thing. Like, and I'm, they kind of understand like what Zach just did. Yeah. I just yeah. felt what 135 yeah. in this band felt like, and I just watched Zach do that. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, a lot he knows of, a lot more of them, than I do. A, them were, <laughs> yeah. a lot of them were doing the red minis, just yeah, one yeah. doubled up, and, you know, I'm like, hey, I just fucking squatted it through four, right? Yeah. yeah. So. That's, but that's great, though, because that showcases the level of where you're at. I and mean, they understand, yeah. like, hey, I, t I started with one band. This is where I was at. This is where you're at right now. Like, let's mm -hmm. get you there. I mean, it's a process. It took me X amount of years, but you can get there, too, right? And I, I think that just, you know, takes that relationship with the client that much better. They trust me that much more and it makes it a wrap the other thing too is the unique way that we're doing stuff like they're not they can't go down the street and get that zach they can only get it with zach yep and that right there is yep. fucking i'm the awesome. guy downtown you're know. the guy downtown that has these type of like that operates like this and dose is starting to see a little bit of that in houston too like because he kind of takes some of the stuff that we're doing too and it's like just even entering that a little bit in to houston he knows that other trainers aren't doing even drop sets with board presses or some of the band work. Like, yeah. even though he's he's mostly still circuit-based stuff, but it's like you can see how it's making a difference with him, too. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. been the separators. I, I understand programming. Yeah. yeah. And once you understand it, it's a, it's a wrap. And that's why I try to tell people, like, uh, I've been doing programs for the longest out of anything. I was programming for my friends when I was 15 years old. I'm fucking about to be 44. Like, I've been doing this a really, really long. I've been thinking about concepts of programming for the longer than anything other business wise mm -hmm. it's really yeah. that broken down it's ba that basic so I, I than i've been alive yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah I, real talk Trey. i think it's really cool to see how like bought in like some of your clients are because yeah. That, yeah. that like shows me some of them are hanging out at the booth i yeah, guess some, they, yeah. someone came up, come up to the arnold and like they're tagging like us like they're fully bought into everything you're doing yeah yeah they, they, that's what they get with me the full package right so it, it's i think that's just i'm me they see, you know, I, I don't yeah. switch up, you know, everyone knows. So. How often in the gym do, like, they ask you how, like, the 400 pounds of band tension felt? Like, what'd you hit today? Yeah, like, I mean, it's usually lot? after we fucking, it, so usually, because like, right now I'm taking a lot of guys through, like, back squat, through reds for the first time. I introduce a lot, of the guys that are there, I've introduced, like, red bands on deadlift and stuff. Yeah. But it's the back squat that really gets people, right? And they're, they're trying to conceptualize, like, you did four each side? <laughs> yeah. Huh? You had to break most motherfuckers. Yeah, like, yeah. So, you know, I think it's, you know, once again, it's just showing that, hey, I'm doing this and, you know, we're going to train you this way too. So, oh, yeah. It's fucking so good. I love it. So, Talk about uh, mentality under the bar, Zach. You've, I've, in my opinion, since you came in this door, you've grown a lot through, like, just getting under heavy weights, grinding through heavy weights, the mentality walking up, having good meets, having bad meets, yeah. having a lot going on and then going and pulling 650 yeah. and then yeah. not having as much going on and then not being happy with your lifts. Like, you've seen the ups and uh, downs. Seen, how have you, yeah. like, balanced that mentally and how have you grown, I think? Sure. Because I've, sure. I've seen a lot of that. Well, you. I think the thing, the reason I've been here for so long and, you know, what drives me, and you said this on one of the podcasters recently, G, but – Things in my life, my business and everything are, are always moving the most forward when my training's a priority, yep. right? And I equate that a little bit back to soccer when I played in college, and my grades were always better when I was in season. And I didn't really understand that when I was 18 and 19. Discipline. Right, yeah. but it was the discipline aspect of it, right? And, you know, in spring, we're kind of having a little more fun. You know, you don't have someone on your ass so much about getting up at certain times, right? But for me, it's I've been able to go through all the you know my last meet I bombed out first meet I bombed out of I've done I don't know more than 10 sanctioned meets now cl probably closer to 15 least, yeah. 15, <laughs> 15 in total but you know for me it's 
you know, that was a rough, definitely one of the rougher days. I headed straight to the bar right after that. That's for sure. <laughs> I but, love that. but, I, but I knew, I, I even knew in those moments, like I knew I was going to compete again. I, I, I knew that. Right. So the, I, I never sweat too much about, you know, you know, missing a lift or anything like that. It's, it's when I don't want to be there. Mm. Right. And I've had a couple of these moments, not too, too much, but I, I just really, really even on my worst days, try to get back under the bar, right? And I'll, I'll step up to the bar, and I, I'm someone who can psych myself out pretty easily. And it's it's just getting under it and thinking less, and kind of hence the dive bomb, how that kind of evolved into. Yeah, that's a real right. Thing. Yeah, talk about that real quick. I yeah. think that's a good idea. That's a good idea because well, a lot of people see you do that and be like, "Why yeah. the fuck is he doing so, that?" And you're elite at it, obviously. The so. dive bomb actually came out of when I Explain got. Explain the dive bomb. Yeah, so the dive bomb is thinking less and just fucking lifting it's just grabbing it off the fucking ground Fuck like yeah. a fucking maniac yeah, yeah. and well like and a re- fucking caveman that's what yeah. it looks like yeah it's some caveman <laughs> shit really yeah. but it's first is loading the hamstrings as tight as i can and f- trying to feel them like firing so when am i like i'm loading up for that before i dive i'm i'm, I'm tight i'm bracing all these thi- things of course right but the idea is like i see a lot of people rolling the bar they're getting they're you know messing with it too much just fucking pick it up right <laughs> you know i probably not on a squat you wouldn't just drop right under you walk yeah. it out brace a little bit whatever but the idea is you just fucking fire so fast that you're thinking less and you beat it up, right? And I, I think bands helped me a lot with that. The first time I did that was when I pulled 650. And that was that same week I left to start training with Zach. So yeah. I left the first gym. So I think a lot of that was my confidence, too, building up to that meet. But push-pull, pulled 650, and dive bomb has just been the way since. So it's, it, it does take a lot of technique. But you, but ha- you used to, like, get up and think too much. And I do think all about that, it. And I would be like, man, I know this motherfucker can pull more weight than yeah. this. And it was it was just more of a mental thing. Yeah, it was all mental. So for me, it's just fucking getting fired up and walking up like, to that yeah. bar. My grandpa used to tell me this thing on a golf course all the time. If you think, you stink. Just fucking just swing the golf ball. Well, it's back yeah. to the reps, right? The <laughs> yeah. more reps you have, the yeah. less thought yeah. it gets out of you. Yeah, right? you just you're just reacting yeah. like a bait. Like if you're in a batter's <laughs> box, that's uh, me and AG talked about this a bunch. Like AG loves pitching. He can be in like serious situations, real methodical. He doesn't get rattled. But in the box, mm-hmm. he he doesn't do as good. Is because he's overthinking. It's a reaction. Mm-hmm. Here, it's more pinpointed thought. So it's like you have to if you know that about yourself, you have to take that out. So he needed a dive bomb version of his batting, I think. We yeah. haven't figured that out. Yeah. But the reality is that's – I think it's 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 a it's a mentality thing. So it's like you need a strategy around it, which you found, yeah. and now became an elite deadlifter because yeah. of it. Well, it becomes like muscle memory because, like, yeah. you step yeah. up and then you, you just know where your body's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And you just, it's it's, it's the time. ultimate commitment. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's one thing I like about Olympic lifting, Danny, and you could speak on this. I'm not great at it, but I like the fact that when you jump under a weight, you either commit to it or you're never going to make it. Yeah, you there, do or you it's don't. It's very similar. Yeah. It's like I remember when I cleaned three of team with you <laughs> when you're yelling at me or whatever. I mean, it's you, you get under a clean. It's like you either got it you don't. If you yeah. don't, you're going to be fucked or Hell you yeah. just puss out. So Yeah, there you go. Is that what you do? That's a clip yeah. that cow. Tuck it back. <laughs> <Yeah>. no, no. <laughs> I, would, I would say for most people <laughs> – for most people g- working up to a heavy deadlift, that m- how most people will grab the bar and fuck around with it. Yeah. That three to five seconds is literally where you get fucking kicked in the ass by yourself. Yep. Straight up. That's where the softness comes in. And what you did is listen. You're not gonna think it. The softness. Yeah. You're not gonna think about it being lighter, right? You're, you're, you're not exactly. gonna think exactly. it up. Yeah. You're not gonna think <laughs> about it at all. Yeah. I mean, that. Danny does not smoke a cigar. Yeah. No, oh. you kind of come un- unraveled at the top. Oh, don't. Hey, this is Danny, quality really? control, Danny. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, there we go. Nah, this is good. Um, so, good. Who's it? I was going to say something. Please, Danny. Go unrelated to lifting specifically, but like rewinding it back to, to Cardinal and making the transition. Yeah. So many people want to do something like that. Maybe it's not personal training or something like sure. that. But did you ever like, you know, kind of shit your pants at any point or you were just so definitive like in what you were doing that like you were just all in? I well, yeah, when they walked up to me and said, Collect your shit and leave, uh, I shit my pants ah! definitely. But uh yeah, you know Mama, I got fired. For me for me I it was it, I yeah, definitely was scared in that moment, but I, I I fell back on, hey, I was ma- I was I had 10, 15 clients. I was already making kind of close to what my salary. I was making piss money at Cardinal. It wasn't it wasn't good enough to stay. Yeah. It was my first job out of college. So, yeah, the shock of being scared and all these things. Yeah, of course. But for me, it was like, all right, I'm 20 fucking two. I, yeah. grew up in a, I grew up in a household watching where my dad hated what he did, just hated what he did. And, and I always promised myself that wouldn't be me. Yeah. So and he came to the gym the next day, and what I tell you? Yeah, it was the best thing that was probably ever gonna happen to me. He's hundred percent right. And I, I remember looking at I was that was probably one time I was actually mad at Corey. I was like, 
I was like, how the fuck is he going to say that to me the day after? I'm like, I literally have no money right now. And I was like, I can barely drive here with gas. And then it's funny. I, these I fucker- look straight out of him and go, that's the best thing ever happened yeah. to me. I was like, what the-? I was like, this dude's crazy. <laughs> I still have the video of when I left. Like, I, I drove by, like, the... You know the sign in the front. And I just like took a video, and I'm like, "Fucking, I'm out right yeah. now." Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, it was it, it was one of those. It's weird a burn the ship moment. Yep, you had yeah. no choice. Yeah, and it, it was, and I was just, you know, I swallowed some pride there, and I, I think part of me just felt bad because of the person I am, I, I didn't want to be the person that got fired from a job, even yeah. if that job wasn't the right place for me. But you know, it, that makes it, sense. It just it, it really lit a fire under my ass. So. Yeah. So good. Is this a uh, time to take a break? Cool. Yeah, this is a great time to take a break, and I think we'll <laughs> get uh, uh, the uh, director of athletics at Max Ever Muscle Tower <laughs> on. All right, let's Part go two. grab All right, yeah. quick break. And now, a message from our sponsor. The Roundtable Podcast is brought to you by MaxFormMuscle.com. With us is athletic director Tyler Treadway. Joey, you got a double mic. You're good. You don't need that mic. <laughs> yeah, did you get that? That's amazing. All right, go ahead, Tyler. Two, you can have two. It's yeah. Cool. yeah. Uh, this this, yeah, this that was product a- is so good, I needed two mics to yeah, tell you about yeah. it, right? No, it's good. All right, Jeez. so we're bringing you good recovery. Max Effort Muscle Amino Recovery Lemonade, now NSF certified. There is no difference in the original product and this product. They're the exact same. The only thing is we went the extra step to get the NSF seal of approval. What they do is they check and make sure every product that we say is in this label right here is actually what's in here. Then they test it for 400 ingredients to make sure you will not test positive on a drug test. Again, all our products are clean. There are some other places out there that are whack. They'll lie to you about what's in there. (laughs) Everything that we say is in this label is actually in this product. Nothing will make you test positive. Athletes, coaches, you can take our product knowing full well that we put every resource we have into making sure your athletes are safe and being taken care of and getting the most out of their hard work. That's all I got. Fuck yeah. We're, how can they get a hold of you, Treadway? Treadway at MaxEffortMuscle.com. Whether it's high school, uh, college, pro, hit up Treadway. Get this thing rolling. Back to, back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back to the show. Cole, I gotta yes. tell you, I think that's one of my favorite parts. What, where I do the segue? Yeah. The intro? Really oh, yeah, good. dude, I love getting Treadway on here. Yeah, yeah. I, I really it. like your confidence on the microphone. Thank you. Well, I, at now, <laughs> on this microphone, I feel like I'm, you know, every time I speak, yeah. it's like, it's worthy. You no, know, yeah, like, yeah. Like, I'm opening my mouth. Yes. It's like the chalice. It's like yes. the king's chalice. Yes. I feel like I'm cutting a WWE promo again, yeah. basically. Yeah. It all, so, that, we were talking about this the other day, me and Dustin, right, with Cole. Everything comes back to WWE for Cole. Everything comes yeah. back to rap music and 70s bodybuilding for me. Dustin said his was rap music and uh, mob movies. What, what's it come back to for you, Danny? Arm training. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's arm training in, like, I feel like movies, right? Because yeah. a lot of your references are, like, funny movies. Yeah, just like a worthless you kind of, of mine. You kind of yeah, got, like, yeah. a, like, a good 15-year-old, like, slapstick everything, humor. Very everything, sarcastic. Everything yeah. does come back to a movie. For right, me. right, right. Everything we talk about, Danny's like, you ever seen this? He'll say some quote. And yeah, then okay, you had, like, the Most era, of the time, like I a, never get the reference because I never watched yeah. enough movies growing yeah. up. Sea <laughs> Lover probably gets the He most. does. Yeah. Well, because he's, like, an untapped... Like Dude, actor. He is fucking hilarious. He is he's fucking got, hilarious. He's got a deep archive yeah. too. But like, there was an era deep like, <laughs> I don't know, like 07 to 11 or 12 like, yeah. of epic movies, like where like Pineapple Express and shit came out. Yeah, like, yeah. I never saw yeah. that one either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> classic. Super yeah. bad? Have you seen Super bad? Mm-hmm. McLovin, come on. That's yeah, him. There's sick. like, I'm, I, this endless, happens all the time, yeah. Zach. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna view a. Oh, I'll have a viewing at your home for a super bad. There you go. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. You know, I, I'll, you'll know. Exactly. It's gonna be in high school soon. It's time for. Yeah. Order. You'll know exactly why. I want. You, there's one particular scene. Yeah. Well, I was trying to track down the video. So AG went to the uh, middle school, or the intermediate school, the other day to do something for some charity, and they had to bring three kids up on stage. So of course he brings Anna up, right? And they're like, Anna's like, yeah. They're chanting my name when I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was trying to track down the video because yeah, all yeah. I could think, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, 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 pretty fucking good. But, oh gosh. Like we go to class with him. Yeah, 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 and did. He's like, I think I'm like pretty popular. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, jeez, uh-huh. it's pretty amazing. Uh, it's like, running back, right? Yeah, it's like a spitting image. It's unbelievable. Trey, what's it all tie back to for you? Um, probably, probably like, I would say fashion, but like, yeah, like. 
I would say like a mix of like that like pop like just like the pop culture of like hip hop fashion mm-hmm. like streetwear kind of shit. Yeah, like it's the cool. pop culture mix of it in yeah. a sense. Zach, uh, you know I think Give a lot a of yeah I think a lot of mine is probably '90s hip hop. Yeah, you know, I mean that's obviously what we came up on. So for sure. But yeah, I, it's, a lot of it's just fucking lifting weights. Really, I mean the swag just yeah. is all. You know, it's funny how those things early in our lives or points of our lives can kind of shape like where we run into life situations and it goes to this right and that's that's how that's how like when you get around somebody you can kind of see like a little bit how they're molded it i mean cole's got so many fucking wwe references but that's also where he draws inspiration for some of this stuff which makes it so different Seriously, you know what i mean it, it comes back to it because the wwe is literally the ultimate ultimate mix of creativity acting and sports performance those guys are fucking insane athletes and they can all spit fire on a mic yeah facts. like it's it's really un- like unbelievable so i grew up watching that stuff like did you yeah. ever think you'd be this comfortable doing them though um so i feel like no, that's no, no, no. something so, that you you transitioned I mean, I mean, to like just, where it's all bets off so Cole. just personally like i grew up yeah. watching wrestling but the wrestling's on monday like in friday so i never like went out and like I was a very like introverted like kid. That's what I'm up, saying. Because yeah. I was like heavier weight, so I just watched this stuff. I take it all in, but I loved it. I'd go on the trampoline and fucking wrestle. I had like a fucking uh, stuffed like animal thing. Fuck yeah! And I'd fuck that thing up. I was doing every move <laughs> I, possible. Well, no, we, we could we could really <laughs> clip. We could, I, <laughs> for a second, I was like, we could really <laughs> clip that one. <laughs> yeah, did you have a ring I was like, keep going, Cole. No, yeah. no, 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 no. So, so the ring in the backyard Her is actually awesome lot. because you know one of the things I want to. You know, hopefully my kid enjoys wrestling. While I have a kid, I'm not gonna be able to go out on the weekends, so I was yeah. watch wrestling with them. You know, awesome <laughs> little cold dog. But yes, I had a trampoline and I always wanted a wrestling ring. So if my kid, if you, yeah, yeah if little Cole, Stone Cold Junior, <laughs> wants it, um, I will put a wrestling ring in that backyard. That would be fucking awesome. It's really for him now. Yeah, yeah. Gonna be, <laughs> it'd be awesome. It's gonna be like 2 a.m. He's like running through the ropes, going back well, and forth. Well, you could do like what I got. I got that trampoline in the ground. You just need to put ropes yeah, around it, bro. You'd be gold. Yeah. No. yeah Maybe involved. we should cut some promos on that, Cole. You could do a fucking sick backflip too. No, that's what I'm saying. I I like have skills on the trampoline because I would literally go out there for hours and like practice all the moves. Would you, would you cut promos too, like to yourself? Uh, no, no, but I'd be like, I'd be like commentating how like yeah. someone does a move, like, oh my gosh, I would be doing yes. that. I'd be doing that while I was wrestling. Yeah. yeah. I, I had a little Scooby Doo like stuffed animal like pillow thing, and that I, you did not fuck. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just clearing up. I'm just clearing up. No. no. The, <laughs> If he's on the sorry. trampoline, I'm gonna sorry, run from Scooter. your garage with a metal chair. Yeah, you're no. metal chair. yeah, yeah. Like, yes, I, have, yes. I, have, I, have like probably, I probably have like 300 plus little like WWE action figures, and I had every single belt. every single toy belt you could buy at Walmart. It was, it was lit. Not in the trash can. Yeah, <laughs> so but, good. Yeah, everything. Kind of, I mean, but that, but that's what that makes it unique, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yoked. Yeah. And yoked. it was sort of lifting weights, and I started to like see like the you know the trap veins coming out, the bicep trap veins. Things? I was like, oh yeah, it's game. Well, the funny but, thing is, when I didn't know any of that stuff, when I was kind of forcing you to do skits, but then yeah. I started to see it come out. No, yeah, yeah. And For then sure. I was like, oh, there's Finally. some. Yeah. And oh now with, yeah. Like, like the podcast and everything, I really feel like. It's just I'm waiting for the opportunity to where you know somehow Vince McMahon sees me. He's like, oh wow, you'd be a great combo with Pat McAfee. Oh that's yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking about. I like how Pat just wears a gold chain and a black tank top, like every fucking day. I'd wear these doesn't give a every fuck. Time. Yeah, uh, yeah, you should. I mean, it's working for you. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, you're getting a chance to act now too and be funny. <laughs> act. Yeah. What do you mean? You mean like you know when you're like a correspondent? Oh yeah, that's that's actually pretty fun. It is fun. Yeah, but I it mean, gets to tie back some of this like slapdick humor, you know? What oh, I mean? for sure. Which yeah. is funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, Zach also has training with Chet. Can you talk about that? Yep. So training with Chet is. Oh, that's the picture it, I saw the other day. Yeah. Training with Chet is, uh, you know, I think maybe related to Cole in some way. I yeah. mean, m- maybe Donnie. It's only, it's only the same vibes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think Donnie and Chet are probably friends in a past life. Yeah. yeah. So, so Chet's gonna start coming out, but Chet's problem. Is he's he's always chasing the pump. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yes. So that's yeah. That's what you've been telling me. I, I yeah. heard that he's just a pump chaser twenty four seven. Yeah, and sometimes sometimes a grill chaser twenty four seven. So oh. Chet has got to be careful, right? So Chet 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 comes out at night, Ooh. or maybe on Fridays, <laughs> nice. you know, when we're hitting arms. So Chet Chet's gonna be coming out a little more though. So. Right correlation. Yeah. Jeez. I, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'm gonna call Chet Zach. So if you guys get confused, I mean, just accept that it's probably the same person. So. Yes. Yeah. I mean. Okay. 
Yeah, I've heard a lot of great things about this Chad guy. I've heard he's like super inspiring. I really can't wait till you know we can yeah, somehow. Yeah, he's he's gonna be peaking all the time. Oh yeah, no. peaking, <laughs> getting Peak. pumps. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure he'd be great friends with Small Arms Danny. Yeah, yeah, I think he's trying to get in the club actually. There might be a, yeah, there might be a spot for us there. Yeah, we, we have a few nomination spots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I just yeah. have to bring this up though. Some of my clients did. They were like very, very intrigued in getting into the club. So I just want to let you know it, it is pretty prestigious. The, yeah. the Arms Army, yeah, badge no. of honor, yeah. 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 We, need, we need to make a, an actual fucking like, medal. You guys need like a, a medal, like a badge or a jacket yeah, or some shit. For sure. Or a, a jacket with no metal. sleeves, I don't know. A yeah. Ceremonial medal. <laughs> hey, listen, listen, it's all about We need it. one of those coins. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's your challenge coin? Yeah. yeah. Um, Absolute shit show. Is there any other value we can offer? Well, no, 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 yes, yes, there is, yes, there is. And I Please. Think it, and I think it's time to uh, us to make another segue into Danny Ask a Question. But this yes, time, but yes. this time, I think it should be a group Danny Ask a Question. So okay. Cole has a question for Zach. Okay, I like so, that. So, but I we'll start with Danny. There's almost like, this is like an Emmy nominated segment at this point. Yeah. <laughs> right? Is that what they give away for like good actors? I actors I, 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 I think this could be, this could be set up for an Actors Guild Award, I think. Yeah, Dan for sure. well, I was gonna kind of go more lifestyle with you because like okay. you, you were smashing some Guinness yesterday, right? I was, and I had a fucking astronomical pump today. <laughs> yes, I'm Trey because of the that. Guinness, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so, oh, so this talking about your chugging ability though too. That's My chugging fucking, ability is fucking next level. But this is this is. <laughs> But here, yes, I'll talk about that, then we'll go to your segment. So That was my segment. Oh, okay, that was <laughs> Ask Corey. We're supposed to ask Zach. Yeah, we're supposed to ask Zach. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I was going to go around, though. Oh, okay. Right, no, oh, cool. All right, that's, that's all right, yeah, no, all right, so, all right so listen. I went to the pub, which I'm, I frequent at. It's St. Patrick's Day, which to me is like a Guinness holiday. How can you not? I drink, I'm dedicated to Guinness. When did you start drinking Guinness? So, I'll tell you the story, Daniel. That's a great question. Actor Skill Award. Nice question, Danny. So, Actor Skill. I was on campus at Ohio State, acting like an Ohio State student, but going to Columbus State and half not even really going there either, but I was in that area. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so tired of drinking natural light and <laughs> shitty beer. Because I was like, this sucks. I don't even know how people like this shit, right? My friend Chunk is what they call him. Brings me a fucking six pack of Sam Adams Winter Lager and goes, You ever tried Dark Beer before? I go, no, but it's gotta be better than this other fucking bullshit we're drinking. And I'm drinking Mickey's 40s most of the time, yeah. which Garden. is fucking epic. <laughs> yeah, I had a Mickey's 40 garden, it was so great. Uh, that was just amazing. like, I had so many Mickey's 40s piled up outside that in my garden, I called it, that my landlord called and made me fucking like throw it away. It was fucking amazing. <laughs> You're in the other neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Uh, so anyway, I drink one sip of Winter Lager and I'm like, this is fucking amazing. And so then I was like, what other beers are out there? And I, I can't even remember where I had my first one at, but it was because of that I started trying a bunch of different dark beers. And I drank Guinness the first time and I was like, this doesn't even taste like beer. This tastes like nectar of the fucking gods. I was like, this is like, this is like a fucking, this, <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is like, I'm drinking a fucking steak. This is like, yeah, I'm fucking, yeah. this is like, you know, a milkshake, a fucking protein shake. And then the next day I didn't feel as bad. And I was like, I drink Guinness from now on. Yeah. And, and then I got, broad. then I got super fucking, you know, into it. And then I was like, and I noticed other people thought it was like fucking weird because yeah. they were like scared of it. So I wanted to drink it even fucking more. Yeah. So then I wanted to make it look like Aquafina when yeah. I drank it. Aquafina. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah. So then I was like, so then I just got real, you know, fucking into it. And then I was like, fuck it, I want to go to Ireland, which I know Zach's been to. I wanted to just like, I, I became like a, a Guinness enthusiast, partly because it didn't affect me the same way as light beer. I really enjoyed it. And I realized it was like its whole thing. And they had been pr producing beer since the late 1700s. Like the history is unbelievable. And so all of that being said, one day we go out to the bar and I've been on Rachel forever about drinking. And she's just like, eh, it's too dark. It's the same shit everyone else says, right? It's fucking soft. They never tried it though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She drinks, she's like, this is fucking way better. So she gets one. And then from now on, we just order two. And we go to the pub, they just bring us two pints. <laughs> you know, we go to fucking Ireland, two pints. And it's like, it's fucking epic. And the funny thing is, when I'm not drinking, because I've got the rules, right, for the most part, that was a Thursday that we just drank, but I, that's not normal. She goes out during the week sometimes, she'll fucking get a pint. I'll be like, yo, get this pint of Guinness or whatever. And they'll bring it to me and I'm like, nah, it's hers. And like, and then I'll get like, like random bartenders that'll be like, 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So it's, so and then it's you know we got deep. We got it at the house on tap. We went to Ireland and drank it. Went to the storehouse. So it's really been a major part of my degeneracy since then, and I That's fucking amazing. love it. So yesterday yeah. I drank two pints with Rachel. They tasted once again like Aquafina. We got a lot of Just business like stuff Aquafina. going on. Fucking. And then the girl that you know usually pours them, she's walking by with one, and she looks over. She goes. You want this one for my third one, which that's usually kind of my limit, especially in like an hour. And she's like, she's like, well, there's a lot of people drinking Guinness today. It's not just you guys. I was like, yeah, go ahead and give that one to me too. All right, all right. Yeah. So. Pull my lever. Yeah. It was good. So yeah, I, I love fucking Guinness. Great question, Danny. Yeah. No good problem. story. You got it. <laughs> yeah. It was a good story. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't know. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Keep continue. Um, Actors Guild. We'll, we'll go with Trey next. We're gonna save Zach for last. Um, Trey, what are your qualms with arm training? My what? What's the fucking call? What? What? Definition, your problems. Please? Your problem. Oh, okay. What's your deal with, with arm training? <laughs> Trey, Trey doesn't do arms very much. That's why I'm asking. Because hmm. I'm weak as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he's, not, I, he's not obsessed with my the arm leg, My legs are actually strong, so I like to train legs. I, I, I had this thought this morning, <laughs> and not that you feel this way, Trey, but as we're going through this arm workout, I'm like, okay, this is like a normal hard workout for most people, and this is our arm workout. I was like, I think most people just don't push their fucking arms enough. That's probably why. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. They, they think if they more. do high reps, they're gonna get small. Yeah, yeah, some shit like that, right? And I mean, we're so, in here doing, you know, I drop mean, sets. 45, 45, 45, 40, rep 40, yeah, 45 yeah, 45 rep sets, right? So. You know that Corey G vlog, Zach doesn't look very small today. No. How much no. you weigh today? How much did I weigh today? Uh, 188. Yeah. yeah. Uh, back to the Trey's, Trey's answer though. So do you not enjoy doing no. arms? I don't enjoy training upper body. Interesting. Yeah. He I said like this to, to me multiple times. I only times, like, so I only I like to train. Like, like I could like literally squat like seven days a week. Yeah, you like not, love it. And not do any upper body. But your upper body is pretty jacked though. Yeah. Yeah, but I hate training. <laughs> That's interesting. All right, so here's, here's the thing. Trey is sneaky jacked. Trey, what was what was the best bench you had? I benched 275 in high school. Yeah. At what weight? At what weight? Like one, like 40. 50. Yeah. Jesus. That's legit. Yeah. Trey's yeah, fucking. I had it. So you talking shit to, to Trey? I had like a good. I had like I was strong. <laughs> yeah. I just like, don't enjoy it. I mean, Dustin. Okay. Dustin paused 275 at 142, and that was like a big fucking bench yeah. for us back in the day. I missed it that day at 165. I, I made like 250. Like 275 in high school is fucking good when you weigh 150 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good bench. Yeah. <laughs> Trey, right. how's your how's your lunges going? Because I know you're back on it, right? They suck. Yeah. <laughs> Eight hundred meters right now sucks. You're in that you're in that where it's fucking hard right now. Uh, no, I'm like past that, but just trying to like push like because I'm trying to like consistently be under twenty minutes. Mm. Yeah, like, that's that's moving. basically if it's like over twenty minutes, it's slow. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm at, 20, <laughs> I'm at twenty-seven, so yeah. yes, we're slow. <laughs> slow and jack. You're doing some weird patterns though too. Yeah. Time, well, right? and also sometimes I'm probably more than 800 because I'm faster than other days. Some days I might be like right at it. Yeah, so I might do. It. I might go back to weight. I was thinking about doing weighted again. Mm -hmm. like, I've been I'm thinking like, about that like, too. I'm like, next week I might start like 400 weighted. I, I'm thinking, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Because hmm. I'm gonna do like I have Jake's vest still. So so yeah. I mean like that vest is fucking like heavy. Like if you put all of it in, it's like 40 pounds or some shit. That shit just like so, damn near a third of my body weight. Mm -hmm. So Trey. <laughs> Because it seems like most of us, we lunge because we want to get fucking jacked. You're already jacked, so what Jacks. What do you get out of lunging? What do I get out of lunging? Um, I like lunging. I like, so when I lunge 800 meters, I feel like, to me, it's it's like when you get done, it kind of reminds me of track, like when I would run like the 400 meter is what it is. Mm -hmm. It's like the dopamine, it's like the dopamine hit and then like the yes. fucking, and then like, just like the, the difficulty of the workout too, as well as that. I just like the fucking, diff I just like it because it's fucking hard. And like lunges are like Thanks. one of those things that like, as much as you like them, they if you still go to, suck. It, when you go to the track, when you're like going to the track, when you're going to the track to lunge, you're like, dude, I don't want to do yeah, this. Yeah, I'm like, checking my phone a little longer yeah, yeah, in my yeah, car, yeah, 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 yeah. like trying to you're put like, it off. Yeah, like, everyone, like everyone can agree, like when you're going to lunge, you're thinking like this fucking sucks. Yeah. So just getting, so like getting through that is like. I got the pump on my w. fucking life today though, so I was really pumped, well, <laughs> literally pumped after, but like it felt, they made me feel better today. Like yeah. way better. That's like the best feeling too though, is when you do go, when you do go lunge though, and you start lunging, and they already, and like they feel <laughs> good. Though. Spring and light. then like and, and then like, like oh, and then yeah. you're like all right I'm gonna fucking get it today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause I was talking to Jake. It, you really have to treat it each day as an entirely new opportunity to face like adversity. Because I'm on today's day 77, and I keep telling Jake I'm like I'm treating it as day one because it feels fucking different and hard every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you've done a really good job, Cole. I think the scale that you 
you're in some new territory for you right now, I believe. For sure. Just awesome. in life in general. Yeah. 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 Facts. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> I said I tweeted out, I said twenty twenty U is fucking all gas, no brakes. Every time I get on TikTok I just see I cold. Break, I ain't the brakes yet. I shrug TikTok is my favorite so far. Dude, the dog of TikTok right here. You watching? The dog of TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, so All yes. right. Here's your question. So, uh, let's talk about character development. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So you've had you've had an interesting evolution of characters. <laughs> Obviously, again, coming from the WWE background. Um, how do you think about a character? So, like right now, it's Cold Dog, right? Yeah. So, like, how how do we get there? Well. First off, it's all about storylines, and some of this goes back to, I think, why I enjoy branding and marketing so much. It's how do I basically take something I'm doing naturally and show it into the world and make it in a cool, like, way. So I think the character development is, it's just creating these storylines and different, it's just different ways of marketing. I'm basically doing the same thing with each character, just in a new twist. You like know. if somebody wants to create their own character, what are you going to tell them? The first thing, and this, and this is just like creating your own brand like what's authentic to you like like seriously what's the first thing that comes it, it feels natural whenever i come up with the names and these sayings and stuff like that it literally just it just slips off my tongue well, i don't even think about it if more i think than about making the gym i didn't have to like think about what i wanted yeah mm -hmm. i just did exactly what i wanted to train in because it was like, so authentic and you know? and i think that people that, know yeah and because it's so authentic and it's so easy for you to talk about like i can do it at any time it's just it's already in there, so I don't have to overthink about it, and it just leaves so many windows like of opportunity to just expand, you know? Yeah. All right. Talk so, about. all right, Zachary, you ready? Give all right. Me, Training I'll Zach. give it to you. Um. Please. <laughs> Not the Scooby Doo pillow, though. Yeah. <laughs> I can't fucking get away from that. It's so good. Got it. um, no, I'm just thinking about the uh, the meat. Uh, in bodybuilding show in May, yeah. so like, um, yeah. obviously that's coming up pretty soon, right? So like, what what are you doing differently now than maybe you're doing like a month ago? Sure. Uh, like, what are you thinking about? Like from a physical standpoint of view, definitely like lunges have changed a lot. Programming, nothing has changed. That's a beautiful thing about all this, right? Because yeah. we already do it. That's fucking what we do. <laughs> so yeah, lunges a lot. So and that's. Uh, I, that's something that I really have to lean into the lunges. I, I struggle with every day. I, I saw guess. Zach the other day, by the way. Yeah, yeah I know. No, no, yeah, yeah. I'm I, pretty sure he told everybody. Yeah. Danny just smoked me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, well, that, I was watching you, Danny, a little bit because I'm like, man, I am just not pushing it enough. Did you yeah. realize it was him? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I mean, I could tell. Yeah. So, so Linda's pushing Evelyn around the track. Oh, I'm fucking that's lunging. awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, I just could tell by his arm. So. Yeah. Even from that far away. No, I just. So yours is Zach. You just uh the conditioning piece is going to be the main yeah and, and which i you know going back to my years playing soccer i i once i find my groove again it's not tough for me it's mm -hmm. the 400 meters just kind of being consistent with each day but like trey said it's what i've started to do is put it before my my morning client so i yeah. have to get it done mm -hmm. and get to the gym and i'll even like get there like 30 minutes before my first client so i have to push it a little bit oh right? yeah so you have it, a quick window and yeah, you have no choice because you're going to be working the rest of the fucking get day. Get it done, right? So it, it's just for me, it's, it's just showing up and getting those lunges done. That's probably the biggest struggle for me. The diet and nutrition stuff, that that falls into place for me. It's I, I've always just, you know. Because you're on the AF life, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing a lot of sweet potatoes and all that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm doing, uh, Cole's getting me maybe on this idea of uh, maybe trying more. Oh, not yet, not yet, yeah, not yet. Yeah, oh, yeah, down yeah, the road, yeah, down yeah, the road, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I may we'll be I may be experimenting with that here yeah. soon. So yeah, the, the diet and nutrition falls in place for me. Yeah. So, but it's uh, I, every time I step out on that track, I, uh, you hate yourself. Question, question. Well, <laughs> and when this come, by the time this comes out, we'll have this stuff out for one on one with Zach. Zach's gonna be offering yeah. one on one uh -huh. to the yeah. community, awesome. so you guys will be able to reach out to him. It's like I know there's people in our community at Corey G Max Effort that need that one extra step of help and need somebody to be looking yeah. at their forms. Need or want? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah Matheny's the man. We haven't really been able to offer it, so yeah. now, yeah. now we do. I'm gonna take the spot over. So if you're looking for that help and that extra little just accountability and everything, I'm your guy. So fuck yeah, Get diced. pumped about that. We good? Yeah, boy. I have, Go ahead. Well, I, have, I have one question for Zach. Right? My deadlift, like, I'm just like, I, I seriously think I could deadlift, like, probably, I could focus on that for five years, and I would not be able to pull four or five as fast as you, as you do. <laughs> so what is, like, Maybe one Maybe you need piece, to start dive bombing. Yeah, what is one piece of advice for anyone listening who wants to up their deadlift so they can be, you know, strong? Hamstrings. Hamstrings. That's the best thing I'm going to tell you. Hamstrings. you got to train your hamstrings. Hammy strap was actually one of the best things for me, actually, to learn the dive bomb, because what the hammy strap does is that, that focuses on the ECM phase so much so every Hell time yeah. every time I'm doing the hammy strap I'm how much can I control that way down right and for me that's the transfer over to right as I start to fucking pull 
I'm exploding up. That's what Not that, pull, fucking pull. That's the dive bomb. <laughs> you dive down, I'm, I'm controlling those hamstrings so much, they're contracting like crazy, and then right when I get flat, I pop back up. So I'm gonna tell you, if you, can do the hammy if you can do the hammy strap right now, control that eccentric as much as you can and just learn to fire your hamstrings better. Because when I first came to old school, I remember I could go back to all my videos last, I, I deadlift with my back. My, every time my hips would shoot up, I, mm -hmm. I would never use my legs. And as soon as we started using that hammy strap, we were doing those Russian leans and all that. And all that GHD stuff too, because yeah. that's kind of where it started, then yeah. it, it got progressively harder. Yeah, and it, 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 so I just tell someone, hey, learn to contract your hamstrings better. I mean, and that seems so simple, but when you're, you're doing your accessory work, whatever it be, you know, try to feel your hamstrings work. Mind muscle connection, bro. That's all it is. Yeah. It doesn't, yeah. you don't have to be a bodybuilder, bro. You be a powerlifting man. <laughs> I'm trying to be a fucking dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, this episode is brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com. It was fucking amazing. Zach, glad to have you on. Happy to have a stogie on a Friday. Hell yeah, yeah, boy. Cheers. Roundtable podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G, yeah. at Small Arms Danny, yeah. at Trey Speed. Dog. And the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Dog. And Zach Matini, <laughs> we out. <laughs>